Entry pass to Javon Kingston, who's checked in for Villanova. Kingston, one of those guys in this league who's the sixth man and leading scorer on this team. He's number 22 in your shot right there. Very powerful, 6'7", 260. Spin move, very, very good player. Kind of like Gardner of Marquette comes in off the bench and he's maybe their best player. There's Pinkston, who's the leading scorer despite being fifth on the team in minutes. And Darren Hilliard, who's been playing real well of late, continuing with that strong shooting from the outside. Yeah, he, he's been great in the last, in the upsets, he was great. Louisville and Syracuse upsets, he also played well, had 14 at Notre Dame. The guy's a player, he's only a sophomore. There's Dunn on the drive. And the rule wrestles the rebound out the way. Providence, one of seven from the field. Credit, start things here. Credit the Villanova defense, Anish. An offensive foul. Media timeout with 15.54 to go. When we come back, we'll look back at what was a historic week for Villanova. Villanova lost at home to Columbia by 18. That's what made all this the more improbable. You called the game against Louisville where Nova upended the Cardinals. Timely three-point shootings by uh, Bell late in that game caused it. And then Archie Diacono, terrific game against Syracuse. Several nights later, James Bell again comes up big from three-point range. Overtime, Villanova triumphs. Historical for that team. An unranked team beats two teams in the top five right off the bat. Tough stuff. And that guy was very important in both of those victories. Had that huge three, as you saw, to force overtime against Syracuse. And Villanova, with those two wins, has played itself onto the bubble. Still a lot of basketball to play, but they were far from just the bubble a few weeks ago. <laughs> they were sinking in the bathtub. <laughs> this defense is very impressive. And we're sitting up close right here to the, uh, to the action, and there are white shirts everywhere. It seems like there's six guys out there right now. One for seven for Providence. They're turning the ball over. Bryce Cotton has not been in a, involved at all, and he's the league's best offensive player, leading scorer. Drew, entry pass to Pinkston in traffic. And the rebound to Henson. Boy, he got in the crowd there, didn't he? Five black shirts around him. Cotton, number 11, needs a shot. Council, second leading assist man in the history of this school with the basketball. Cotton is fouled by James Bell. That's two on Bell. Well, Yakubu is likely to come in the game with Bell or Chenault. Turns out to be Chenault. Bell, a two guard, very valuable player, kind of one of those quiet types. Chenault comes in, so now Archie Diacono goes to the two guard here in East. So Chenault will uh, guard Council, and Archie Diacono is going to have to guard Cotton. That's a big, big deal for him. Council lost it, and Chenault calls for time. Didn't need it. He called for time because he fell to the floor, but he could have passed the ball off. Three turnovers now for Providence, a slow start for the Friars. You talk about this Villanova defense. You, you kind of saw the genesis of them coming together in that Louisville game. They turned the ball over 19 times in the game. What was it about their defense then that kept them in against the Cardinals. Well, their free throw defense was great. Louisville was 12 of 24 <laughs> from the foul line in that particular game. <laughs> the last time these two teams played, free throws were a big part of the storyline. Providence shot 48 of them. Bryce Cotton scoreless so far, 24 points in that game. And turnovers, 25 for Villanova. That has been a season-long problem and is still a problem for Jay Wright's team. It's a problem, but they have compensating factors, and Ed Cooley was extremely happy at the end of that game. They've only got two wins in the league, and beating Villanova at home was big for them. 
So they came in here confident that they could win against Villanova right here, but two teams uh, very, very different from the last time they played. Full court press now by Providence. They want to force some of those 25 turnovers we talked about. Chenault, the floater won't go. Offensive rebound, Ochefu. It was quadruple team for a minute. Since the beginning of the game, when Villanova really wanted to go inside to Yaru, every time the ball goes into the paint, Providence attacks. Here's Hilliard. He falls down. And he's fouled. Watch as the ball goes inside here to Pinkston. He is going to draw a crowd right here. We get a little trip action. Anytime that there is a double team, you can back out of it or you can try to split it. In that case, Hill, you tried to split it, and frequently there's going to be some action uh, when that happens. This is not good news for Providence, right? Two fouls on Kadeem Bats, their best interior player. Two guys who've been invisible who are good for Providence. Cotton and LaDante Henton. Neither one has done anything in the game so far. They're their top scorer and top rebounder. 3-1 goal for Hillier. Offensive rebound, Villanova. Open look, Archie Diakino. The three on an offensive rebound throwback is a very important way to score. Archie Diakono made a shot similar to this kind of action against Syracuse with 2.2 seconds to go. And here he does it in the middle of the game. 6-0 run by the Wildcats thanks to that kick-out pass. That's the second assist we've seen from Daniel Ochefu, the freshman, a pretty good passer for a big. Yeah, and, and he's a good inside-outside type guy. Right here, let's take a look at Archie Diakono. That's the shot with 2.2 left. Now watch this, it's the same shot. Look at this, the clock now. Five, four, three, bam! He makes that. I'll tell you what, man, that is great, great stuff. And of course, they went on to win in overtime. Three points and two assists in this one for the freshmen so far. Cotton couldn't handle the pass from Council. Kingston. And he stepped out of bounds. Pinkston is drawing a crowd. You got to admire Providence's scouting report. When he gets it, they are all over him. We remind you, today's game is airing on 41 Big East Network affiliates throughout 17 states. And we'd like to welcome our viewers and thank them for spending part of their Sunday with us. I really don't know what other game you'd be watching today. <laughs> Cotton having a little difficulty controlling the ball here in the early going. Not getting any shots. Look at the switching. There's Hanson from deep. In and out. And Ocef with a rebound. Villanova doing a good job on the defensive glass. In the first meeting between these two, Providence plus 10 on the offensive boards. Very good rebounding team and solid offensively. Usually, their problem is at this end. Sofani is in the game right now. Bats with two fouls. It's an interesting situation as Sofani goes up right here. Sofani fouled on the way up. Let's go back to the rebounding point. Siddiqui Johnson is not here. That is Kadeem Bats. He's their number one interior guy. He's got two fouls. Okay, he's going to sit out probably the rest of the half. Instead of Siddiqui Johnson being in, he's got some personal situation going on. Ed Cooley told both you and I before the game. So as a result, Kofani gets in there. He's a shot blocker, but that hasn't played a lot of minutes this season. Johnson taking a personal leave of absence. It's a voluntary leave. We don't know how long, indefinite timetable. The part of Providence's strength, as we saw against UConn on Thursday, they can get to the boards. Not having the size, how do they now adjust? 
Well, th this guy's going to have to do something, right? Or they could go small, but I don't think that's what the way he wants to do right now because, because of the fact that Villanova is powerful on the interior. He's got to go big to start. As the game progresses, Cooley could go small and go with uh, Henton at 6'6 as the center. Ash Yakubu. He's a three-point shooter. Took it to the basket that time, <laughs> and nothing there. <laughs> exactly. He's a three-point shooter. <laughs> That's his best thing. Yakubu, 48 of his 70 makes this year have been from beyond the three-point line, and two of them were against Syracuse and Louisville, which were timely and very important in those wins. Bumped by Cotton with the shot clock winding down. Twenty-one point five points per game for that guy you just saw on your screen. An under-recruited player is Bryce Cotton from Arizona, finding fame at Providence right now, leading the Big East in scoring. That's big. And Chenault bumped by Kofani. So the foul starting to add up for Providence, sort of the reverse of what happened when these teams played the first time around. Yeah, I guess home games have something to do with that, right? <laughs> Villanova, of course, the two wins against uh, against uh, Louisville and Syracuse were downtown at the Wells Fargo Arena. This is on campus at the Pavilion. Two home courts for the Wildcats. Here's Cotton for three, and that rattles home. Here's the second field goal of the game for the Friars. Yeah, and, and without him, they get, kind of struggle a little bit. He's a volume shooter. He needs 15, 16 shots a game. Chenault all the way to the bucket, and he gets the roll. Pass picked off by Ojefu. Five turnovers now for Providence. Yaru can't get the tip to go. How about that? Ojefu, 6'11, to the floor. He's got a long way to fall, man. That was impressive. Hey. Hillier to the basket. And he's fouled. Villanova hustling all over the floor. Hilliard gonna get his chance at the free throw line. Franco Shefu, the big guy, was on the floor. His loss to UConn, different story today. Villanova, big on the boards early on. Not only big on the boards, big on the floor also. This loose ball gets on the ground. Oshefu, 6'11", diving for that basketball, and he creates a situation where they're going to get to the free throw line. you got to credit that big guy. I'll tell you, only a freshman, he really gets after it. And right here you can see the same exact play. Yaru tips it. Oshefu dives on the floor. And you bruise yourself, going from that height. Six rebounds for Oshefu in this game to go along with two assists. As Hilliard knocks down the first free throw. Darren Hilliard, what's changed about his game of late? He was struggling for a while. He has really come on strong the last three or four contests. I think his confidence has risen with the fact that he's making shots. And, and once he started making shots, everything else started to fall into place for him. He's only a sophomore, played a lot last year. You know, played a lot with Malik Waynes and in the backcourt. But I mean, his confidence is much, much higher than it was earlier in the year. Switching man-to-man -man defense. What that does is maintain pressure on the ball. Hinton, way off the mark. Hinton had his shot blocked by Hinton. He gets it back. Yakubu for three. Look at 
whistle for the loose ball by Villanova. And Pinkston got the timeout with 10-19 to go in this first half. They're all diving to the floor. <laughs> well, fitting that it's a Super Bowl Sunday, we're getting guys diving on the floor. It looks like a football game out here a bit, doesn't it? It's got that feeling early on. Let's take a look at today's Wendy's Wooden Watch. Jack Cooley certainly in the discussion for conference player of the year. No doubt about it. I mean, averaging 15 a game. Look at the NCAA ranks. That's nationally on the right-hand side. The big factor there is the double-doubles, points and rebounds for the interior player for Notre Dame. He's playing with four guys who can shoot from the outside. That helps a lot. We were talking about this yesterday during our meeting. There's about four or five guys with a legit chance at this stage to win Big East Player of the Year. No real front runner this year. No, I, and, and I think it's uh, emblematic of uh, the season in general with teams as well. Every time we turn around, somebody's highly ranked, they lose two games against somebody, you know? So it's, uh, it's all compressed, both in terms of players and in terms of teams. Two of 10 so far for PC. Credit the Villanova defense. It has been outstanding. One of our officials today, Gene Steratar, is an NFL official, and he was talking to us before the game. He's never done a Super Bowl. He was an alternate for one, but he's done four AFC championships between New England and Indy. Those were fun. Here's your room for the easy finish. On the floater, nothing there. Pinkston oh. and Kofani battling down low. Here's Pinkston for three. Bob offensively, what does Providence have to try to do to get in a rhythm? Well, they, they, you know, they need to go off the dribble because the switching has really, really been effective. There's Cotton from the outside, and he's fouled on the shot. It'll be two shots. Three shots. It was a three-point attempt, so Cotton will shoot three. The foul on Yakubu. This kid's a great story. From Arizona, everybody in Arizona wanted him. Went to Providence late and has been outstanding since he's been there. He's a junior now, 6'1", only weighs about 165 pounds. He's a little guy, but man, he can, he can make shots from deep and he's very, very quick. Talking to Ed Cooley about him yesterday, Cooley thought Cotton has had, had as much a case as Jack Cooley did a year ago for Big East Most Improved Player of the Year. And he really just marveled at Cotton's progression from where he was as a freshman to now where he's become the leading scorer in the conference. Great stuff, you know, great, great stuff. He's having a tough time getting shots today. Every time that there is a screen by anybody on Providence's team, they're switching, Villanova's switching. They don't care whether it's big on little, little on big. They don't worry about the mismatches because they're so aggressive. It's been very, very effective. Another couple of points, and uh, Mr. Cotton will be a 1,000-point scorer during his junior season. Four more now. Midway through the first half, Providence, six turnovers, two field goals. Ooh, that's ugly. Earlier breaks the press. Last couple of possessions, Villanova's taken ill-advised shot. That one by Hilliard and a long three by Pinkston. Both out of what they need to do. They're only one of seven in their last group. Quality shots not there like they were earlier. Villanova making Providence work in its half court. I like this off the dribble. Dunn gets it. Can't get the roll. But he chases down the rebound. Offensive rebound by Hanson. He's second in the Big East in double doubles behind only Cooley. Goldsboro 
from the baseline. And some bonus offense for Ed Cooley. <laughs> they were down at that end for a long time, weren't they? That happens when you get a few offensive boards. The full court pressure by Providence has gotten Villanova to take some bad shots. Goals throw two points with that field goal. Averages less than that on the season. Nice pump fake by Hilliard. Villanova getting back in transition. Fortune for three. That goes. They're back. Good to see it. Providence hanging tough. They changed their defensive strategy. They're on a seven to nothing run in each because of what we're seeing right here. The pickup point has been extended. Yakubu whistled for an offensive foul. And that's his second. Villanova totally out of sync. Providence making a run back. Fortune finding it from deep. Count, and they're very, very good against zone. Better against zone than they are against man, actually. So uh, they're back, and uh, that's good to see with Jamie Dixon's crew. Providence back in this game, a 7-0 run. That goes out of bounds off Hilliard. will stay here, and Villanova struggling to shoot here over the last few minutes, just one of its last nine. Yeah, and, and the problem is they're taking all ill-advised shots. I mean, they're not in the high percentage mode like they were earlier in the game. Providence has picked up their defense, too. you got to give them credit. But uh, Villanova's judgment on offense has been much to be desired the last four or five minutes of this game. Kadeem Batts on the bench for Providence with two fouls. And to the tough floater. Nine unanswered for the Friars. <laughs> Ochefu misses the dunk. Fortune for the lead. Oh, oh my God. Talk about a turnaround of fortunes. An easy shot at one end and then the three at the other end. Fortune has made two threes in the last couple of possessions, huh? Nice. Ed Cooley telling me yesterday, Fortune's the guy who's been struggling with his shot. And he said for the amount of minutes he plays, he needs to score more. That's a big sign for Providence. And a 10-second violation to Ed Cooley's team ramping up the defensive pressure. The three from Fortune, he made one from the other side as well. Nothing but net on that one. That's a confident looking stroke. Big off the bench, Fortune started earlier in the year. Fortune again, gonna wave that off. It's gonna be Villanova ball, a foul against Legante Henson. Moving screen on that one. Brings a smile to Ed Cooley's face. Jay Wright cannot be very happy about what's happened in the last few minutes with his team. So now Henton with two fouls. He goes to the bench. Kofani in. Henton, one of their better rebounders. Kadeem Batts, one of their better rebounders. Both with two fouls. Siddiqui Johnson not with the team right now. Small ball, right, is the answer. Full court press. Scramble. Make it sloppy. Two from Archie Diakono. Don Randy in to his own man and he traveled. Eight turnovers for the Friars. The full court press at this end has not created turnovers at this end. What it's done is it's got Villanova playing out of control at this end. And they are taking ill-advised shots down here because of it. Mentally, it's getting to them. And that's a foul on Kofani. 
Villanova in the bonus, so it'll be a one and one for the Wildcats. And that's now two on Kofani, so Ed Cooley's got to worry about his foul trouble situation with the big men. The question is, can Bats go in and play and not get his third? If I'm Ed Cooley, I'm not using Bats at all in the first half. He got those two early. He's their best guy. The question now is, what happens? I would get Kofani back in the game, leave him in there. You know, he's more of a dispensable player for Ed. Goldsboro, of course, has stepped up and made a shot. He looks pretty reasonable out there right now. He's going to get a lot of minutes. Number 21. Well, you're good at the foul line. One thing Villanova does real well is get to the charity strike. One of that team's strengths. Yes, indeed. It's because they're physical. Fortune's hit a couple of threes. And Kofani can handle the pass. Jump ball. Possession arrow Villanova. It's about time you discovered why Puerto Rico does it better. Log on to seepuertorico.com and discover Puerto Rico for yourself. Early in this game, Villanova got Yaru the ball, and he produced. Since the full court pressure has been applied, they have not gotten him the ball close to the basket at all. Bell shuffled his feet, a turnover for the Wildcats who've come undone. Making a foul on Villanova, a foul on Bell. So that's three on James Bell. Providence players remember the last time they played a team with this Villanova on the uh, front of the jersey, they forced 25 turnovers and they're going back to that. Despite the fact that Villanova played great against Louisville's press, they're not playing great against Providence's pressure. Fortune feeling it. Third three for Josh. Providence has hit on its last five field goals and now a turnover. I think Jay needs a timeout here, although they've taken two timeouts on jump ball situation, so he can't really waste one. Council has his shot blocked by Yuru. And another jump ball, this time it will belong to Providence. The Friars with a three-point lead on the road, looking for their third Big East win, 21-18. Providence. For Villanova, they're coming off a loss Monday to Notre Dame. In that loss, Notre Dame freshman Cam Beachide, who had been struggling with his shot, hits five three-pointers. Josh Fortune for Providence today, struggling with his shot, three of three from downtown. Well, they've been fortunate that he is out there for sure. The left wing deep in transition after a scramble for the ball from the right-hand side, and then an in-and-out type three. Josh Fortune coming into this game in Big East games, 7 of 24 from three-point range. And, of course, he's feeling confident. He doesn't care about statistics. He's a freshman. He doesn't know any better. So good stuff for him. Part of the heralded freshman class for Ed Cooley, Fortune, Chris Dunn, and Ricky Lido, really the prize of that class, ineligible this season. There's Bryce Cotton. He's the Big East's leading scorer. Very quiet in this first half. Five points for Cotton. Kingston on the inside, working on the smaller council. That's the first play where Pinkston has gotten the ball like this without being triple teamed. The double team came from the wrong side. Dunn should have come along the baseline. Instead, he came high side, which allowed Pinkston to get the shot and the three-point opportunity. Good numbers. He's their leading scorer. Look at the right-hand side, nearly 50% from the field. Good player. Getting to the foul line, something he does real well. 
Gets to the strike almost seven times per game. Yeah, more than any player on their team. Small team in for Providence. Bancroft also number 22 in the game. Fortune again, why not? <laughs> oh man. I'll tell you the three-point shot, right? Brings back things. Get deep behind, you launch a few, get right back in it. Hilliard thought about trying to answer. There's the double down low on Pinkston. Dunn to Cotton. Oh, oh. Hilliard looks hesitant on his three. He's used the pump fake five or six times in this game as people were closing out on him. Archie Diacono also not hot in this game. So as a result, Villanova behind Providence, who's last place in the league, or second to the last place with South Florida. That last foul, the 10th. On Providence, so Villanova will shoot two the rest of the way in this half. Let's keep in mind, as this half closes out, Providence is doing this without their best interior player on the floor with Kadeem Bats. So that is admirable. Cooley did a really smart thing. When his big guys got in foul trouble, he played small ball. And he went after Villanova, full court pressure. There's the steal. Here's the big fella, Yaru, leading the break. Now he pulls up. Wise decision. The defense of Fortune and Dunn have been very good. Both freshmen, long. Fortune guarding Chenault right here. Won't go for Chenault. Fortune clears. There's Cotton down the lane. Too strong. Didn't hit the rim, so the shot clock did not reset. Gold's throw down low. The penetration, the dish, the foul right here by Archie Diacono. Too little. Thought he was going to slap at the basketball. Didn't get it. Goldsboro can't complete the three-point play. Coming up at halftime, we'll look at some of the top freshmen in the Big East Conference. Joel Lenardi from ESPN joins us for a little bracketology plus first half highlights and stats. Kingston through the double team. And he'll turn it over. An offensive foul on Javon Kingston. Nine turnovers for Jay Wright's team in the first half already. This player right here with the basketball, Chris Dunn has done a very, very good job. Fortune's doing the scoring, but he's D'ing up. Creating a lot of pressure. Cotton. He'll try from the outside, and it goes. That's a backup three. That is a very, very difficult shot. Down six. Archie Diakono waiting. Villanova holding for a final shot. 
They'll get this, and they'll also get the ball to start the second half. Archer Diakono. That doesn't go. Offensive rebound, Yuru, and time expires. I thought we had a foul. They may look at this one to see if the clock ran out before the foul was called. We saw a similar situation at the end of the St. John's DePaul game the other night. And I believe that's what the officials are looking at right now. If they well, the official, the, foul, the official along the baseline definitely called a foul because he put his hand up in a fist. That's the, the indication, the visual signal of a foul. Whether or not that that foul was called before the clock, he could call that and then insist that it be shown. Let's take a look. Watch the official along the baseline now. It appears he called it after it, it, time expired. It, it seems like it. it seems like it. They're going to take a close look. As many, as many close games as we have in the Big East Conference this year, overtime games, games decided by one point, two points, this kind of thing is important to get right. Yeah, we saw it. What was it, Wednesday night, St. John's and DePaul at the very end of regulation, a similar sequence. It's a little different because it, it, it's, a, it's not a shot, it's a foul. So a lot of times they'll go and they say, did the guy get the shot off? Clearly, he is signaling. At his, he is definitely signaling after the lights went off. And indeed, Bob, they watched the video. They saw what we saw. Josh Fortune came alive. Providence's fortune changed in that first half. Last time they played, they got a six-point lead at the break. this year it was Providence that rallied from a seven-point halftime deficit to win now it's on Villanova to get back into the game Nova did not particularly shoot well in that first half well bad offense by both teams good defense by both teams Josh Fortune's four for four from three-point range is what got Providence the lead he is on the bench right now in his place Kadeem Bats the starting center he had two fouls early in the game he is back only played four minutes in the first half. Weave action. Hilliard was the high scorer in the first half. Yaru, a nice offensive board here. There's Ochefu in the post. Goes to the hook, short. Yaru, now with 10 rebounds and eight points. He started the first half this way. He starts the second half this way. His teammates should go to him more often. This is a man's rebound right here in traffic. Gets it up strongly. He's been very, very good in their wins against Louisville and Syracuse. They played well at Notre Dame as well. Last foul, Bob, on Henson, so he's got three now for Providence. Here is Henson. And he's bumped on the way up. You've got to give it to Providence's defense. In the league this year, PC is giving up 47%. That is not very good. In the first half, they held Villanova to 28%. So their defensive effort, very, very good in this game. Henson gets the first free throw to go. The sophomore from Lansing, Michigan, a Big East all rookie team selection last year, second in the conference in double doubles, and had a double double against UConn in the loss Thursday. His numbers as a freshman are identical to his numbers this year as a sophomore. He's been very consistent 14 points, seven or eight rebounds a game for an undersized power forward in this league. Hey! Hilliard down low, he gets it to go. Kadeem 
bats tied up and another foul. So it's eerily similar to the second half of the first meeting between these two teams where not a lot of game flow, but a lot of whistles. <laughs> for three. That's off. Ochefu gets the offensive rebound. Oh. Hilliard over the double team and he's fouled. And if that's Bats, it's his third. It is going to be on Kadeem Bats. Hilliard has gotten the notion in his head he's going to take the ball to the basket. Last two possessions did the same thing. Bats, of course, a little frustrated here. He's going to come out. Interesting, you know, Cooley's in a funny position right here because really, with, with the, the game the way the game's going right now, they played well enough without him and, and had the lead at half. But, you know, he's, he's their best interior guy, and uh, now he's going to have to sit again. You could play him for about four or five minutes and pray he doesn't get his fourth. Hilliard, the best scorer so far in the game for Villanova at the line, right? He's got 12. Most of them are from the free throw line. He's been very aggressive, even though his three-point shot's been working for him at late. He had eight from the foul line for Hilliard. Yeah. James Bell is in the game, 32. He only played six minutes for Villanova in the first half, and he's their best three-point shooter statistically. Loose ball. Archie diakono has got it. But Hilliard whistled for a foul right in front of us. I was going to dive for that loose ball, but you got in my way, Anish. <laughs> Bob, I would have let you. <laughs> Les Jones had it. Ball was out of bounds. Got to love it. Guys want to win. I'm telling you right now, they come our way, I'm ducking. <laughs> I'll protect you, my friend. on Providence. Let's see if James Bell gets involved, number 32 for Villanova. Six minutes in the first half, he's a quiet assassin type, you know? I mean, he can really shoot the basketball. When all things are going badly, he gets in there, they find him. Against Louisville and Syracuse, he made really big ones. Yeah, think of the overtime session against Syracuse where he had eight points. Yep. Goldsboro. Shot clock at 19 for Villanova. The lob for Bell. There he is. Find the bell and ring it up, baby. Momentum switch. Nova with the lead. Bell gets the loose ball. Hilliard. Bring it up, James Bell. The dunk, the dive. Eight zip run by the Wildcats. Design play. Go to Bell. Plenty of legs, only six minutes in the first half. James, yeah, baby. Four of four from three-point range in the first half. And so far, he is not in the game. Villanova opening the second half on an 11-2 run. And James Bell has made a gigantic difference with a crowd-pleasing dunk and a dive on the floor on the last play. Guarded by the much bigger Ochefu. Shot clock winding down. Done the scoop shot. No good. 
Jaru's cleaning the boards, isn't he, today? Wow. Hilliard splits the double, and he draws the foul. It's on Kofani, and that's his third. Let's take a look at our Big East leaders, brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. Points per game, Bryce Cotton leading the way, 21 and a half for the Providence Friars. A lot of two guards in this group, right? Harrison and Kilpatrick, Russ Smith, and uh, Shabazz Napier. Scoring position. Josh Fortune now in the game for Providence. Nice hands. That should have been a turnover. And Archie Diakono fouled in traffic, so a lot of whistles early in the second half, Bob. Yeah. Penton comes back in for Cotton. Still no Josh Fortune. Oh, yes, Fortune just came in. Number four in the black for Ed Cooley. Four of four from three-point range in the first half. And Henson playing with three fouls. Ochefu down low, misses the bunny. And then he's fouled by Goldsboro. Already the sixth team foul on Providence. Less than five minutes into the second half. Media timeout with 15.56. Villanova on a run. On Providence still early in the second half. Providence has got to worry about some foul trouble. Three players with three fouls. Henton, Kofani, and Bats. Well, Ed Cooley's got a different group in there right now. The hustle has been involved in this game. Right here, Bell gets this, but this I like better. Crowd-pleasing dunk, and then the hustle play to get Hilliard down the court. The teammates love this kind of play, and we've seen a lot of it in this game. James Bell, six minutes in the first half, and he's going to be a fixture here in the second half. Oh, Jeff, who way short on the free throw attempt. Just a 46% free throw shooter coming into play. Scoreless in the game, but he's made a big impact on the boards and with his passing. Yeah, he had six boards early in the game. Now he's got seven, and, and you're right. He's a good high-low passer, also an inside-outside kind of stuff. He's got a few assists on those kind of plays. Got a pretty good-looking stroke, and he has a high IQ for basketball. He's going to be a good one here. Josh Fortune being guarded by Hilliard, both number fours away from the basketball here. Here's Council. Finds Dunn, and Providence with its first field goal of the half. Full court pressure. This is what helped in the first half. The turnovers did not come in the backcourt, they came in the front court. Jeffrey to Hilliard, and Hilliard walked. Council off the dribble, that goes. Council missed 10 games earlier this season after suffering a leg injury in the season opener. Really changed the way Ed Cooley's team had a function for a while. No doubt about that because he dominates the basketball for them. 15 points and five assists last time they played. Bell from deep. And Yaru goes over the back for the rebound. He's whistled for his second foul. Well, he's got 11 boards in the game already, and that was a pretty aggressive play. Jay Wright cannot be unhappy about that kind of play from his big man. You called it out in the first half when you saw Providence press. You said it affected Villanova after they broke the press. We've seen a couple of quick shots by Villanova against the press here in the second yep, half. Yep, same uh, scenario developing, huh?
Hilliard unable to connect. Council all the way to the bucket. Jeffrey baseline leads for Yaru, and he's fouled on the way up. He'll shoot two. That possession right there was much more illustrative of what Villanova should be doing once they get through the pressure. You know, take your time, poise, get five touches. People move the ball from one side to the other. In the first half, they just drove the length of the floor, took wild shots. This time, they got it where they needed to get it. Good game so far from Moof. And with that free throw, he's got a double-double. 10 points, 11 rebounds in this game. He's a guy who now has four double-doubles in Big E's play. Did not have any in non-conference action. And talking to a couple of the assistant coaches, they said, he's just better against bigger guys. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, he had 14 points and 16 boards against Syracuse, your alma mater. So uh, that's doing something against that front line. Yaru also plays better when Oshefu is in the game. It's a second big man. Oshefu did not play early in the year. That's also helped him. Here's Kadeem Batts playing with three fouls. This is from about 17. Easy, easy. Oshefu working on Batts. Bell can't get the tip. So almost walked. That won't go for Fortune, his first miss of the game. Guys are going to get tired when it goes up and down like this with no timeouts and no stoppage of play. And there you can see it. You know, that's a fatigue play right there. Your root could not get his hands up. He's tired. 11 turnovers for the Wildcats. Providence, Henson's got four fouls, Bats, and Brees Kofani with three. They're all post players. Sutton in the game, 25 for the first time. 6-11, best shot blocker on Villanova's team. They got a mismatch there, they had Bats on Chenault. Yaru is feeling it. He looks tired. Also fell down. And now the steal, Archie Diakono. Pretty easy, too. Moof is happy. He didn't have to run down on that one. <laughs> <laughs> he could rest at that end. Josh Fortune, the hero of the first half for Providence. Turnover that time is council couldn't get it to bats. They've got five on three. Two guys are down for Providence. Chenault for three. Way off. Sutton was pushed out of bounds. Fatigue is happening. Guys are diving. And Ryan Archie Diacono is finishing. the field here in the second half. They have a three-point lead on Providence. Time now for a look at our Denny's value player. Look we'll at your Denny's value player and just a bit. There he is, Darren Hilliard, 15 points, 8 of 8 from downtown. He's really been Villanova's value player for a couple of weeks now. <laughs> 8 of 8 from the free throw line for Darren Hilliard. That's where his most value is coming into play in this game. Sutton has not been in the game long, gets up there and knocks in a free throw. Interestingly enough, Sutton came in for a Shefu 
Jay Wright needed a timeout to rest Muftal Yaru. Hilliard made the play. Nice value there, too. Absolutely. Villanova in the bonus. We're not even midway through the second half. Sutton traveled. Despite the fact that this is a fairly low scoring game, we've seen lots of action in this game. And interesting storylines, you know, bats foul trouble is a big deal. Yeah. Yaru's stellar play, Josh Fortune's three-point shooting, and Hilliard's all-around play. There's Bats, and he was guarded that time by the smaller Tony Chenault, and Chenault fouled him. That's the problem when you have a switching man-to-man -man defense, which Villanova employs. So far in the game, Providence has not been able to take advantage of that very much. I'm surprised James Bell is out of the game. I mean, he was really hot there for a while, both offense and defense. Yeah, he goes in for him. John gets it in. Here's Cotton for three. Off the mark, offensive rebound, bats. And he's fouled on the way up. The fouls on Hilliard. He's got three now. Talking to Ed Cooley about Kadeem Bats. As a coach, you'll appreciate this. I asked him, what's been the biggest difference with Bats from last year to this year? And he said, he's become an active listener. <laughs> an active listener. I like that. But he has really taken his game to another level this year. He was solid as a freshman, but he's more than doubled his scoring average, been yep. a rebounding force. We've seen him knock down 15-footers. And, and like his counterpart, he has zero points in this game so far, just like Yaru had zero at Providence the last time they played. Still stuck at zero. Yakubu better against zones than he is against man-to-man. Yaru -man. down low. Oh, he should have made that. That was beautiful passing by both guys, Archie Diakono and Oshefu. Mufta just missed it. Anish Kingston is at the bench. I'm guessing he's coming in for Yaru. No, he's coming in for uh, Yakubu, which surprises me a little bit. Pinkston is a good offensive lane player. Yakubu, I can see why Jay's taking him out here. He's much more effective against zones. He's a three-point specialist type guy. And Providence is playing all man. Which is funny because they got back into the game against UConn the other night, largely in parts of the zone. I'm sorry, James Bell in the game right here. There's Fortune, four threes in the game, make it five. Josh Fortune, five of five from downtown. Archie Diakono can't answer at the other end. Offensive rebound, Ochefu. There's Cotton. Bats, he can make that. In and out. And then Hilliard fouled by Cotton. That's going to be free throws for Villanova. It'll be a one and one. Cotton is a guy who does not foul often. Trying to go for the steal on that one. Hilliard doing the majority of his damage right here from the free throw line in this game. He makes the front end 16 points. That's a game high. Let's watch his form on this, okay? 
Let's see if his elbow is underneath and his wrist is cocked. Take a look at this. Nice hands. That's his routine. Two bounce. Notice how the elbow is under the ball. The nice follow through. He's 10 for 10 in the foul line. Great form. Put it on the instructional video. I'm going to work with you on your free throws after the game. <laughs> That's about the only thing I do well. <laughs> in trouble. There's Bats. Down the lane. Count it. The Providence bench held their breath for just a minute. That could have been his fourth foul. Let's take a look. Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> Whoa. Well, he's clearly was outside of the restricted arc area and uh, that's a tough call there. Three for a won't go. Bats 0 for 3 at the line now. And Providence 5 of 11 from the free throw line. The Villanova students are chanting something. I'm not sure that we can repeat what it is on the air, but they're clearly affecting bats. College basketball. Gotta love it, right? Council for three. That goes, and Providence takes the lead. Archie Diakino. That won't go. No legs. He went up sideways. You would think Providence would be the guys who are most tired because they've extended their defense the most. But Villanova looks like the tired team here. And Josh Fortune right now. Looks like he was holding his leg there for a second. That's a can't get it to bats. Villanova ball. It's been the story of the game. You said it, Bob. Guys diving to the floor. Well, Ed Cooley's team, two and seven in the league. Jay Wright, four and four. A lot of motivation on the part of PC in this one. I would look for Pinkston to get involved in the lane offensively for Villanova. Hilliard for three. for three. That goes, and he just crossed the thousand point mark for his career. Wow, and what a pass by Council. He set that up on the run. What a spurt. 11-2 Providence run. Here's Bell. Brick City for the Wildcats. They are taking tired-looking shots. The threes by Bell and Archie Diakono, no legs at all. They went up, hit iron. And Sheffield nearly poked it loose. And foul inside, nice feed from Council. You want to see a pretty three? Take a look at this. Challenge. Bottom anyway. Leading scorer in the league. We salute you. Cotton over a thousand points for his career. Log on to CapitalOneCup.com to vote for this week's impact performance. 11 points in this game. Three point shooting has really been a boon for Providence in this contest. Nine of 13. Nova just two of 12. Yep. And of course, Fortune 5 of 5, as you've enumerated. So Fortune and Cotton doing most of the damage right there for Providence. Jay Wright's team has missed a bunch of shots close to the basket in the last couple of minutes. Both big men, Yaru and Oshefru, both missing layups close to the basket. Lee Goldsboro, the junior from Newcastle, England. 
Knocks down the first free throw. Providence with a six-point lead. Both teams in the bonus. Goldsboro, big soccer fan. Newcastle United. That's his team. Full court pressure by Providence again. It has speeded up Villanova and made them take ill-advised shots. Largest lead of the game for the Friars. Working on bats. Gets around bats. And he's fouled. And that is four on Kadeem Bats. Pinkston loves the contact. He initiated the contact against Bats so that he could slide around him. He is a very clever player. Bats foul trouble the whole day. Hard to get some rhythm uh, in the situations he's found himself in. Pinkston. Only three points on the day. That's well below his average of nearly 13 a game. I think he needs to be in the rest of the way because they need offense. Gets them both. Council, Goldsboro, Cotton, Bats, and Fortune. A five on the floor for Providence. Chenault, Archie Diacono, Yuru, Pinkston, and Hillier for Villanova. Lost it. Last touch Villanova though. And Cotton bumped by Pinkston. He'll go to the line for a one and one. Bob, you wonder, with Villanova, they just went through the gauntlet. Louisville, Syracuse, Notre Dame, the three teams picked to finish one, two, and three in the preseason Big East poll. Is there a mental letdown, maybe, after you get through that? Uh, theoretically, yeah. Uh, you know, I don't see it. Uh, I didn't see it at the start of this game, warm-ups, you know. Game started, you know, everything was uh, going kind of the way they wanted it to. I think the credit goes to Providence. I mean, this guy is making shots in the second half. Their defense is very good. Villanova has missed shots close to the basket. Providence knows that it can beat Villanova. They did earlier this season. Now Villanova normally very, very good here on campus. Several hundred sellouts in a row. See that? I mean, th th that shot is just, uh, uh, you know, terrible. I mean, he's, he's driving one way. There's people in the way. Uh, you know, it's, it's just kind of a forced shot. And they've taken a bunch like that. Shot clock down to eight. Right guy's got the ball. Council directing traffic. He'll turn and shoot. Rebounded by Pinkston. And Pinkston whistles for an offensive foul. was bats there before Pinkston took off. You cannot slide under a player who is in the air. Whether you are moving or not, it has very little to do with uh, the call of a block and a charge. You can move in the same direction and still take the charge. Kadeem Bats playing with four fouls, and boy, there have been a couple of close calls where he hasn't been called here in the second half. Kicked by Pinkston. We'll stay here. Hey. 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 Providence 
East is 2-7 and seven in the Big East. One of those wins last month against Nova. The Wildcats 4-4 four four in conference play. Cotton to the 10. He gets it to go. And the lead is mushroomed to 9 for Providence. Timeout, Jay Wright with 4.27 to go. It's an offense that's sputtering for the Wildcats right now. Well, it's not sputtering for the Providence College Friars. And right here, the league's leading scorer avoids the charge, jumps sideways, uses the glass to knock it in. Sweet play by Bryce Cotton. Here's the top eight. That's the left side of your uh, standings. Marquette, of course, uh, will be playing today at 2 o'clock. Syracuse, you know, in second place right here. Pittsburgh starting to emerge, and St. John's, of course, one of the young teams that are doing great, great things in the league. I think Georgetown's the best defensive team. They held D'Angelo Harrison to 0 for 9 in their win yesterday. And, of course, the second part of it, Connecticut on the rise, in my estimation so far. Bottom five teams struggling. You know, we give a lot of attention to the teams at the top in the Big East. The last couple of years, though, UConn went 9-9 nine and nine in conference from the middle of the pack to winning a national championship. Louisville really was a middle of the pack Big East team a year ago. They get to the final four. Who do you see in the middle of the pack in the Big East this year that has what it takes to maybe make a big run in the NCAA tournament? Cincinnati maybe? You know, Cincinnati's a team that uh, plays a lot of guys. They've got firepower in the backcourt with Kashmir Wright and Sean Kilpatrick. They're a possibility. We've seen Villanova, what they're capable of doing, but here they are in danger of getting swept by Providence. The three-point shot has not been with them as it was in their previous wins. And now another turnover for the Wildcats. That's 17. Council doubled and he calls timeout. Well, Villanova has had problems with turnovers all season long. And, of course, this game is no exception. But there are compensating factors in the wins over Louisville and the win against Syracuse. The three-point shooting was very, very much alive. In this game, 0 for their last nine from three-point range. They made one in the first half. I forget what point in the first half, but they Long haven't made ago. one since. Yeah, exactly. You know, so Jay Wright talking to them right now. So what do you do about that? Hilliard, number four, his reaction has been take the ball to the basket and score from the free throw line. He has to get going. Pinkston is a guy who can get some things done. And you wonder about Bell, whether Bell can make some threes. And you've got Archie Diacono as well. He had that big three against Syracuse. We've seen him at times this season. He can get hot from the outside. Numbers aren't great from three-point range, but you think of the St. John's game. His first Big East game where he knocked down, what, five three-pointers in that one? Yep, had 32 in that game. He had seven threes in that St. John's game, excuse me. Bad mismatch here. Favor of the offense. Good switch. Shot clock down to two. Got to shoot it. Council in the foul line. Rebounded by Yuru. He's had a big game. Well, they got the stop they needed after the timeout. Let's see what they do at this end. This is where the struggle has been. Yuru down the lane. Rebounded by Cotton. And we've seen Providence here the last couple of possessions content with running clock. Elliard went for the steal, nearly got it. Council running the clock is a good guy to have. He's got a terrific handle. Cotton for three. That's way off. Elliard all the way rejected by Batts. Fortune saves it. Well, Batts has been in foul trouble all game long, but that was a big play by Kadeem. There's the double team, and that's going to be over and back. Cotton could not land in the front court. Media timeout with 2.21 to go. 
Villanova down by nine. Do they have a comeback in their bones? Three, 221 to go here in this game. Our defender of the game brought to you by America's Navy, a global force for good. Give it up for Kadeem Betts. Amen. Not played a lot of minutes. They did save this, so they retained possession. So we got to give him credit in the end game because had this gone down, changes a little bit of the momentum of the game. So he erases all doubt right there. Nice play by Kadeem. He's maintained his composure by being in and out of the game and not playing a lot of minutes. So give him some high grades for composure as well. And how about this Providence defense? Much maligned coming into this game. Villanova, more turnovers than field goals. 17 turnovers and just 12 of 48, 25% from the floor. I think it's fair to say that Providence's defense in this game is the best that it's been all season in Big East games by far. So Ed Cooley has gotten their attention in some way. And bench Council and Henson to start last game against UConn. Maybe that was the wake-up call. And that's something going over to you. James Bell taking it strong to the team. Well, Bell and Pinkston in the game. They're the scorers, and Hilliard, of course, in there. They've gotten some calls that have gone the opposite direction for them on block charges. Here they get the baskets good, and he will be at the free throw line. And for Kadeem Bats, that's his fifth foul, so he's done. So the basket good, the free throw, and Bats out of the game. Yeah, and that score is incorrect. It's 45 right now because the basket counts. So it's 52 to 45 with 2.11 to go in the game. And Bell will be at the free throw line with a chance to make it 46. Well, expect full court pressure by Villanova right here. You know, got to do that in the end game. Matt's finished with uh, low points, two points and three uh, rebounds in the game, but he was a factor there at the end. The problem for big guys, they get in foul trouble a lot when perimeter guys do a bad job of containing the ball. They've got to slide over and either take charges or block shots, and those are the situations that put your big guys in foul situations. Bell knocks down the free throw. He's been very clutch this season for Villanova. Heroics in overtime against Syracuse earlier in the year against Purdue in the 2K Sports Classic. Timeout Providence with 2.07 is, you called it, Villanova present, pressing. Today's Big East basketball game is brought to you by PNC Bank for the achiever in you. America's Navy, a global force for good. Puerto Rico, it's about time you discovered why Puerto Rico does it better. The Capital One Cash Rewards Card with a 50% annual bonus. What's in your wallet? And by the new Buick Enclave. It's smart, made beautiful. With Bob Wenzel and Ish Raff here at the Pavilion on the campus of Villanova University. Still a two possession game if you're Jay Wright. And here's the thing, the ball was inbounded, Cotton was trapped, so now the inbounder cannot move. Previously, the inbounder could move because it was after a free throw make. Now, Henton has to stay still. Advantage, Villanova. He stepped across the line. No, no, he stepped across the line. Henton trying to inbound the pass, stepped across the line, so it will be Villanova ball. Take a look at Henton now, watch. He can't move, he steps across. His right leg went across, that's a violation. There was some contact, Providence thought there was a foul, but fortunate for Villanova right there. Game's not over, folks, this is the Big East. And that goes off of Bell, so just when Villanova got a gift, the Regan. <laughs> <laughs> well, now sideline. Villanova did a really good job on the end line last time. They got a good trap. They're going to get a good trap here. Council's got the ball. Has it knocked away? And it's off of Council. Villanova ball. Wow. This will give coaches headaches, especially when you're ahead. <laughs> I want to send some Excedrin over to Ed Cooley right now. 
Good trap again, off council. Team Steratore on the pole. Hillard got counsel in the air, no foul, it won't go. Silly shot. Council, little foul, 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 double. foul yet. Play solid now with five seconds. Cotton all the way. Has it knocked away? Kingston on the inside. And he'll shoot two. Now if you're Villanova, a chance to score points. The clock doesn't move. Ideal. Jay Wright's team has shown a lot of gumption in the last couple of minutes. The full court pressure has been very effective. Trapping without fouling, very important. Making free throws, extremely important. <laughs> oh, Sheffield, watch him on the ball. 6'11, long. His job is to try to make this a difficult pass inbounds. Henson trying to get it in. He did his job. Come on. Cotton over the head council. Too high for him. Villanova gets it back. Go to the basket. Providence has turned it over four straight times against the Villanova pressure. Excellent job. Kingston from the corner thought about it. He'll drive instead. And it gets the wall with the two point game. To the basket! Great decision by Kingston. Don't settle for the three. Plenty of time. Take it to the hoop. Right guy taking the shot right here. He thinks about it. He thinks better of it, and the pump fake gets him into the lane. Great play by Pinkston. Nice, smart play. Avoids the charge, jumps sideways. Very, very nice. Pressure by Villanova has been excellent here. A 7 0 run by Villanova. Providence has turned it over on its last four possessions. We've seen this with Villanova, especially of late. They've had a knack for winning these dramatic games. Boys under pressure. Providence significantly has the possession arrow. Do what you've been doing. Do not foul. Do not foul right now in this possession. Be as aggressive as you can without fouling. There's 11 seconds differential between shot clock and game clock. Picked off by Bell, and he's fouled on the way up to free throws with a chance to tie. You want drama? We got drama in the Big East. This game was all but over a few minutes ago. The trap, the steal, the drive. Wow. James Bell anticipated that beautifully. Cut in front of his player, took it to the goal. I'll tell you what, this is great stuff. Great, great stuff. And Bob, for Providence, you got to start worrying now. That last foul was on LaDante Henton, so he's now out of the game, and Henton's the best free throw shooter for the Friars. Well, what's, what's happening right now is you need ball handling, and their ball handling has not been very good. So he'll come with another ball handler in this case, which he has to do. Their problem, of course, is the game is likely to be tied. Fortune's going to be in the game right here, right? So now, the game, if it's tied, what does Villanova do? Do they keep staying with the press because it's been very, very successful? Or because it's tied, do they drop back and play standard defense? It'll be every, very interesting to see what Jay Wright's decision is here. All right, Coach, let me put you on the spot. What would you do? I would keep pressing because it's been good. Yeah. And, and uh, you've got the other team rattled right here. 
Now keep in mind, when you press like that, if Providence gets through, you know, they got a chance for an easy basket. Bell makes the first. And it's that catch 22 because it's the press that's allowed you to get to this point. Indeed. Togetherness. <laughs> Worry. Big free throw coming for James Bell, a 74% free throw shooter. Nova has been terrific from the foul line in this game, 22 of 26. They decided not to press. Under 20 seconds. Council can't get it to go. The rebound to Fortune. Providence can hold for one. Cotton for three. It's good. You talk about a pressure shot by Bryce Cotton. That was deep. Villanova's fate has been undermined by their lack of getting that rebound on the miss by Council. Take a look. This is way out there. A guy right on him. It gets every piece of the iron and goes down anyway. 18 points for Bright's Cotton on this three. Look at this. Bell had his hand up. Woo! Now we've got this scenario, three point lead. 2.2 seconds left. If you're Ed Cooley, do you foul? How many times have we seen this scenario play out? Well, I'll tell you what. Right here, but they have the ball full court. We're taking a look at this shot again. So Villanova will inbound the ball from 94 feet away. There's no thing in, like in the NBA where you can get the ball at half court. So, depending on where this ball comes in, their job, Providence's job now, is to prevent a long pass, the Christian Leitner play, right? Where it comes all the way down to the top of the key and they dish it off for a three. If they can prevent that from happening, they're gonna be in business here. If the ball inbounds near half court and you're under five seconds like this, fouling is not bad, not bad at all. And how about the irony here? Villanova needs a three to tie. They're two for 15 from downtown. <laughs> well, right here, Kafani at 6'9", looked like he was going to go up and challenge the pass, which is a good idea. Timeout, chess match continues. Yeah, now Ed Cooley wants to figure out strategy using his last timeout. Well, what happens in that, the first timeout is taken, and then as the players go out to the floor, the coaches see what the alignment is of their opponent and then decide to either change or continue, but they want to reorganize themselves here. Typical Big East game, going down to the wire. Providence looking to sweep the season series from a Villanova team that has wins against Louisville and Syracuse. If that doesn't make any sense to you, it shouldn't. <laughs> Been that kind of year, not just in the Big East, but in college basketball. No doubt about it. Providence came so close Thursday against UConn. Got to overtime. The Huskies able to pull away in OT. They had a nine-point lead late. Let's go back to the Cotton Three. Might be some more time left. Well, the officials checking right here. 2.2 is what we thought. I think it's staying like that. Big guy on the ball, pressuring the shot, the uh, inbound play. Bell to inbound. Baseball throw. Yaru's got it. And Providence holds on for a three-point win. Our Papa John player of the game, well, Cotton was king, especially down the stretch. 
The game winning three, four of seven from distance, 18 points. A big win for Ed Cooley and the Friars. No doubt about it. They sweep Villanova. Terrific, terrific win for them. Villanova was joyous last week on their two big wins. Today, not so much. How Providence' quick. effort defensively was outstanding. How quickly fortunes change. Providence gets into the win column. Villanova's now lost two in a row. Final score, Providence 55, Villanova 52. The preceding has been an exclusive presentation of ESPN Regional Television, the worldwide leader in collegiate sports. For Bob Wenzel and our entire Big East crew, I'm Anish Schroff. So long from the Pavilion.